Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is Pramod and this is another Comshare Security Plus actual exam question series. And this part is also very helpful to pass the Comshare Security Plus exam. So let's go to the questions. And this is the question. So which of the following allows for the attribution of messages to individuals? Option A, adaptive identity. Option B, non equalization option C, authentication, option D, access logs. And the correct answer for this question is option B, non reproduction So explanation is, so non reproduction means the ability to prove that a message or document was sent by a specific person and that they cannot later deny sending it. This is achieved through cryptographic techniques like digital signatures, ensuring the messages origin can be verified. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option B. So let's go to the next question. Next question is which of the following is the best way to consistently determine on a daily basis whether security settings on servers have been modified? Option A, automation. Option B, compliance checklist. Option C, attestation. Option D, manual audit. And the correct answer for this question is option A, automation. So let's check the explanation. So the best way to consistently determine on a daily basis whether security settings on servers have been modified is through automation. So automation allows for continuous monitoring and detection of changes to server configurations, providing real-time alerts whenever a modification occurs. Whereas manual checks or compliance checklists are less efficient and prone to human error. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, automation. So let's go to the next question. Next question is, which of the following tools can assist with detecting an employee who has accidentally emailed a file containing a customer's PI? Option A, SCAP. Option B, NetFlow. Option C, Antivirus. And option D, DLP. And the correct answer for this question is option D, DLP. So let's check the explanation. The tool that can assist with detecting an employee who has accidentally emailed a file containing a customer's PI is DLP, data loss prevention. So DLP systems are designed to monitor and control the flow of sensitive data with an organization, including PI, and can detect and prevent its unauthorized transmission to various channels like email. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option D, DLP. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, an organization recently updated its security policy to include the following statement. Regular expressions are included in source code to remove special characters such as dollar, high, semicolon, and, and question mark from variables set by forms in a web application. So which of the following best explains the security technique the organization adopted by making this addition to the policy? Option A, identify embedded keys. Option B, code debugging. Option C, input validation. Option D, static code analysis. And the correct answer for this question is option C, input validation. So let's check the explanation. Input validation is a security technique where an application checks user input for invalid or malicious data before processing it. By using regular expressions to remove potentially harmful special characters from, from variables, the organization is ensuring that only safe data is submitted to the application. This prevents attacks like SQL injection or cross-site scripting accesses where attackers can inject malicious code into the application through user input. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C, input, validation. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is a security analyst and the management team are reviewing the organizational performance of a recent phishing campaign. The user click through rate exceeded the acceptable risk thresholds and the management team wants to reduce the impact when a user clicks on a link in a phishing message. So which of the following should the analyst do? Option A, place posters around the office to raise awareness of common phishing activities. 
implement email security filters to prevent phishing emails from being delivered. Option C, update the EDR policies to block automatic execution of downloaded programs. Option D, create additional training for users to recognize the signs of phishing attempts. And the correct answer for this question is option C, update the EDR policies to block automatic execution of downloaded program. So let's check the explanation. So blocking automation execution, if a user clicks on a phishing link and downloads a malicious file EDR endpoint detection and response can prevent that file from automatically running, significantly reducing the potential for damage to the system. This is the direct measure to mitigate the impact of click even if the user falls for the phishing attempt. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C. So let's move to the next question. Next question is which of the following has been implemented when a host based firewall on a legacy Linux system allows connections from only specific internal IP addresses. Option A compensating control, option B network segmentation, option C transport of risk, option D SNMP trap and the correct answer for this question is option A compensating control. So let's check the explanation. So when a host based firewall on a legacy Linux system allows connections from only specific internal IP addresses is compensating control has been implemented. So compensating control this refers to a security measure used when a standard control is not feasible or practical. In this case a legacy Linux system might not support a more advanced firewall solution. So host based firewall on the individual system is used as a work around. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A compensating control. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is the management team notices that new accounts that are set up manually do not always have correct access or permissions. So which of the following automation techniques should a system administrator use to streamline account creation? Option A guardrail script, option B ticketing workflow, option C escalation script, option D user provisioning script and the correct answer for this question is option D user provisioning script. So let's check the explanation. So user provisioning scripts, these scripts automate the process of creating new user accounts including assigning the appropriate permissions at access levels based on their role within the organization. This minimizes human error and ensure consistency when setting up new accounts. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option D user provisioning script. So let's move to the next question. Next question is the company is planning to set up a SIEM system and assign an analyst to review the logs on a weekly basis. So which of the following types of controls is the company setting up? Option A corrective, option B preventive, option C detective, option D deterrent. So correct answer for this question is option C detective. So let's check the explanation. A SIEM system is designed to detect security incidents by monitoring and analyzing logs from various systems. It's a detective control because it identifies potential issues after they have occurred allowing the company to react and investigate further. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C detective. So let's move to the next question. Next question is the next question is a system administrator is looking for a low cost application hosting solution that is cloud based which of the following meets these requirements. Option A serverless framework, option B type 1 hypervisor, option C SD-WAN, option D SDN. And the correct answer for this question is option A serverless framework. So let's check the explanation. So serverless framework allows developers to deploy applications without managing servers. The cloud provider handles infrastructure, scaling and other operational tasks. The significantly reduces cost and complexity making it a good choice for low cost cloud based application hosting. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A serverless framework. So let's move to the next question. Next question is a security operations center determines that the malicious activity detected on a server is normal. So which of the following activities describes the act of ignoring detected activity in the future? Option A tuning, option B aggregating, option C quarantining, option D archiving. 
And the correct answer for this question is option A, tuning. So let's check the explanation. So tuning refers to adjusting the settings of a security system to exclude detected activity that is deemed not malicious, essentially ignoring it in the future. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, tuning. So I hope you are enjoying this video and this part has been completed. So study hard, good luck and thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe the channel to see more video like this. I will upload next part shortly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.